Hi, my name is Jaime Gonzalez, and I'm the Conservation Education Director for a group called the Katy Prairie Conservancy just outside of Houston, Texas. And we oftentimes get the question, how do you make the world a better place for wildlife and for people? And I always say, you know what, start with native plants. Native plants have probably been growing in your area for thousands of years, and so the native bees and the monarch butterflies and other pollinators know to use those plants and get everything that they need to survive from those plants. So if we can get more wildflowers and native grasses and native trees in our living areas and at our local parks, we're gonna be doing a lot of good for the planet. So today I'm gonna to show you one of the coolest ways of establishing new native plants in your area. It's a thing called a seed ball. And we're gonna show you how to make the seed balls, which materials to use, and where you might think about getting some local seeds. So what do you need? Well, you need five parts of red potter's clay per mix. You need three parts of a growing medium like compost or topsoil. You need one part of native seeds and you need some water. And we're gonna go ahead and show you how to mix this up, but let me go ahead and comment on each of these ingredients. Real quickly, red potter's clay can be found at ceramic shops and you can usually get a fairly large bag. I would stick with the red potter's clay and not the white clay. White clay sometimes can have chemicals that can burn skin. So use the red potter's clay. We're gonna use five parts every time we mix up a batch of seed ball mix. Your compost or topsoil. Make sure that you're using a fairly rich growing medium like compost. We're using mushroom compost here, but you can use a variety of things. I would say that if you're using compost from your garden, just ensure that it's well composted such that all the weed seeds are killed in there. You don't wanna be spreading weed seeds into your your new planting area. You just want the wildflowers and grasses growing there. So we're gonna add three parts of this every time we make up a new batter uh, for seed balls. And then the last part is one part of native seeds. And what I would say is probably contact your local nature center, bird group, wildlife conservation agency, state park, and ask where can I get local seeds that will be beneficial to our local wildlife. And uh, what you'll find is that they should have a list of reliable sources for your seeds. Here in coastal Texas, we use our friends over at Native American Seed. They produce a lot of great seed mixes like the Lady Bird Johnson mix that have a wide variety of wildflowers for things like monarchs and bees and flowering beetles and things like this. So this is a really good product, but you need to find out what your best mix is, not what we're using necessarily here in Texas. So contact your local nature center or state park. The last part is going to be the water. And we're going to add water to help bind all of these component pieces together into a seed ball. Okay, it's time to mix up our components. So as I said earlier, what we're going to do is we're going to mix in five parts of clay. One, two, three, this doesn't have to be super exacting, but just as long as you're making a good effort to four, to mix them in approximately this ratio. I'm gonna get this spoon to help me out a little bit. Let's keep this up in here. And usually you won't use this small of a measuring cup. I just wanna keep it kind of uh, easy for you guys to, to visualize. Um, you wanna mix up a bunch because this goes pretty quick, especially if you're working with kids. Okay, well, I got five parts of red potter's clay. One. Two. three parts of my growing medium. This is my mushroom compost, but like I said, you can use a lot of different kinds of growing mediums and you'll be okay. And then my one part of native seeds. Now, ready to mix this up? And in order to do that, I like to kind of stir it together a little bit before I put in the water just so I get it a little bit more of a, to be more of a homogenous mix. And you can see that it's hard to see the seeds now and it's getting harder to spot uh, where your, your growing medium is, but it's all in there. So the key here is don't add too much water at the beginning because then you'll have to use more and more resources to make it right. So slow as you go. So I'm just gonna add a little bit. And I'm gonna mix this together. And you're starting to see fewer dry spots. 
Okay, but not quite there. It's still a little bit dry, so I'm going to add a little bit more water. And you just want to make sure that none of the clay is visibly dry. You just want to make sure to really mix it up well. And what I would say is make sure to use a real sturdy spoon that's not going to bend or break on you. No plastic spoons or anything weak. Uh, wooden spoons tend to work really well uh, for this. Okay, so that's the consistency I want. If you take a look here, it's like a super, super thick pancake batter or cake batter. So thick that I can do the test. And here's the test. Will it stick to my finger? If it sticks to your finger, it's going to make really great seed balls. Okay, we're ready to roll our seed balls now that we've made the mix. So we use these roasting pans, these aluminum roasting pans, because they're stackable. So you can make a whole bunch of seed balls, place them on this newspaper, and then add another tray as necessary, and then take them to a place where they can dry for three days. Make sure to uh, not try to dry your seed balls in a place that's very, very humid or damp. Otherwise, the, uh, the seed balls won't dry quickly enough, and some of your species might actually start sprouting before you want them to. So what we're going to do is we're going to break off enough seed ball mixture so that you can make a seed ball that's approximately the size of an old school marble. See that? Now, if you make them much smaller than this, some of the seeds will be protruding. And if they're protruding out of the seed ball, that might mean that, uh, that rodents or birds or other things might try to get your seeds. And one of the roles of these seed balls is to help protect the seeds from birds and rodents and other things until they're ready to sprout. So you just want to continue to make these seed balls for as long as your batter holds up. And, um, and you can make with a group, you know, many hundreds of seed balls rather quickly. So this is kind of an addictive uh, activity. And, uh, and once you've made one single layer of seed balls that covers your whole tray, then you'll want to add some more newspaper and then start another layer. You don't want to stick seed ball on top of seed ball because then they start to stick together and it's harder to uh, distribute them once they're dry. So you just want to make them about the size of an old school marble and make as many as you can given the amount of batter that you've created. You've dried your seed balls for about three days and this is what they look like. They are rock hard and that's a good thing. What's going to happen is your, your seeds inside your seed ball are going to be protected from rodents and birds and other things that would eat the seeds and not let your plants sprout. So what you'll want to do is just take these to an area where you'd like to restore a little meadow, a little prairie patch, um, a, a nice little place for pollinators and butterflies and that kind of thing, and just throw them on the ground. Do not bury them. Do not plant them. The advantage of using seed balls is that this is kind of a self-contained little ecosystem. It's got things to protect the seeds. It's got the compost or topsoil where the seeds can grow in. And so the rain will break down the outer coating and it'll sprout right from the seed ball. You don't have to do anything except just Gently put them in an area at a seeding rate of about one seed ball per square foot. Once you've had a pretty good amount of rain in your area, the seed ball will start disintegrating, exposing the seeds and allowing them to sprout. So you should end up with something like this.